everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm glad you're here. Today I want to talk about rulers. I'm going to be starting a series called High Fives, which are my top five of various things. Everything from my top five rulers that I use to my top five ways to make half square triangles. But I wanted to start out with rulers. I started quilting 47 years ago. Maybe it's 48 by now. Anyway, a long time ago. They didn't have rotary cutters and rulers and mats when I started quilting. If we wanted to cut strips, we marked it on a piece of fabric and cut it with rulers or tore it, which was not good because then you got raggedy edges. And then we used templates out of whatever material, cardboard cereal boxes to um, the plastic lids on margarine tubs, whatever we could find that we thought might last. But when rotary cutters and rulers were introduced, it was a godsend for any of the strip cutting that you needed to do or cutting squares, any of those things, it was a godsend. Now the rulers that I'm going to show you are the ones that I use most often in my quilting. Some of them are newer, some of them I've been using since the beginning of rotary cutters and rulers. If you are an experienced quilter, some of these, maybe all of these, will be familiar to you. If you're a beginner quilter, then a couple of them probably will be already. But I wanted to share what I consider my top five. The first one, the ruler that I say you should have no matter what. If you can only buy one ruler, then it would be this one. Not particularly this brand, but a six by 24 inch ruler. This is the workhorse for any strip quilting or piecing that you're doing. This happens to be a quilter select, which I like because it has a non-skid surface on the back that really is non-skid when it's on fabric. So I've been collecting them, but there are many brands of rulers. Uh, the, there's a very popular brand called Omnigrid. This is an Omnigrip, but it's a an Omnigrid. You will often see these in when they first came out, they were yellow markings instead of this fluorescent green, and you'll still find those. I use those for years and years, perfectly fine. The six by 24 is important because it gives you enough length that if you're cutting strips from a fabric that's just off the bolt, it will cover that width. And then the six is a very, just a very popular measurement. It also has markings on it course it's got perpendicular lines so you've got 90 degree angles but you also have 30 60 and 45 degree angles which can be very useful if you need to cut at an angle on any of your strips so 6 by 24 really is a workhorse you can do a lot with a 6 by 24 rulers are expensive so you want to when you start investing in them to invest the ones that you're going to, that will be most useful to you they call me the ruler queen at my local quilt shop, so I have lots and lots of rulers. So I know how expensive they are. All right, next up would be a square up ruler. And again, these all come, these come in, oops, wait a minute, let me talk about this first. Six by 24, there are also eight and a half, um, and like eight, eight and a half inch by 24 as well, and those, if that's what you want to invest in, that's fine. It, I started with six by 24 and that's pretty much what I use now. But I also have an eight and a half by 24 because sometimes when I'm cutting borders, I want them to be eight inches wide finished. So I also have an eight and a half by 24. Next up are square up rulers, which are always square, <laughs> uh, but different sizes. This is a 12 and a half inch. 12 inch is a popular block size, finished block size. So when you square up your ruler before you sew the blocks together, you need 12 and a half inches to allow for the seam allowances. So a 12 and a half inch square up ruler is very useful. You'll also want to make sure that it has a line going from corner to corner, the 45 degree line. It's also handy to have 60 and 30 marked as well because it helps you when you are trying to make sure that you're getting the block as straight as you can, you'll often have seam lines that you can line those up with so that it, it's a square looking block. This is, again, is a quilter select, which has the 
the background. I have no affiliation with Quilter Select. I just like their rulers. The first one that I got was a 12 and a half inch. I think this was, it says Dottie Gall down here. I think I bought it, it was an Eleanor Burns shop maybe? I don't know, anyway, it has, it looks kind of like a creative grids, but it has its uh, raised lines on the back, which acts as a sort of grip, so it doesn't slip. You can see that I have used this a lot. The corners have been worn down to where they aren't corners anymore. They're, they're rounded. I don't know what I did there. Probably rotary cutter went way wild. But I used this for years and years. I, I really like this ruler. Here's one. This is a Creative Grids ruler. It's also a 12 and a half, and it has some grippies on the back, so there are textured circles on the back that, that help to grip it. A lot of people like Creative Grids. They also have six and a half by, or six by 12, et cetera, et cetera, rulers. They've got a lot of rulers that have various grippy things on the back of them. So that would be, number two this is a 16 and a half inch and this is a, a pretty big ruler <laughs> and you can with a square up ruler square up any block or fabric that is that size or smaller so this would do anything from a 16 and a half down to a quarter inch square, which I don't know exactly why you'd be squaring up to a quarter inch, but if you're doing miniatures, maybe, I don't know. The larger you get the square, the more chances you will have to be able to square up a block using a square up ruler if you get a larger block. I think they also have some 24 inch, 24 and a half inch, which I just haven't invested in. The thing about having the larger one that is that if you're getting down to squaring up smaller squares, then this is a lot to be um, moving around and flinging around while you're trying to do that. So just keep that in mind when you decide on the size of your square up. The third one that I get would be a smaller square up ruler. This is a six and a half inch square. That is from, looking for a couple more here. That is from Quilter Select. Again, I don't have any affiliation with them. I've just started collecting them since I found them. So this is a six and a half inch square, which I like because if I'm doing anything six and a half inches or smaller, then I don't have as much to, to move around or manage. And I still have enough room to, to hold the ruler down without getting my finger in the way of the rotary cutter. I have cut the tip off my finger with a rotary cutter and it's not fun. I would not suggest doing it. it. It doesn't hurt all that much to be honest. I just cut a little bit off but it bleeds like a son of a gun because you have so many capillaries down there and the 12 year old ER doctor just can't understand how you <laughs> cut off the tip of your finger while you were quilting. Anyway, um, this is a six inch Square. No, this is a six and a half inch square. Quilter Select. This is a six and a half Omnigrid, which is interesting. It's got the usual markings that you would expect, but here's a, a three inch that has markings, uh, a grid drawn out for you, not just the uh, dashed lines, but a full grid for you there. So if that helps you to find the eighth inch and quarter inch pieces, then that is that might be useful to you. This is a six inch, this one I've had for a long, long time. Corners are starting to, to round off. This does not have a non-slip back, so I have added on these adhesive bits of plastic that are non-slip, non so it will grip better with them. So that would be my third one, is a, a smaller square up ruler. As I say, with the larger square up ruler, you could certainly square up pieces this size, but Typically, I use the large square up rulers for squaring up blocks after I finish piecing them before I put them together. And I use these when I'm cutting smaller squares, just squares of fabric. Although, if I'm doing smaller blocks, I will certainly use that. So that's number three. Number four is block lock. 
again, I have no affiliation with, I have no affiliation with any ruler companies or any quilt related company for that matter. But the thing about the block locks, this is a, a half square triangle ruler and they also have flying geese, kite shapes, drunkard's path of various sizes. They have a whole collection of rulers to help you size up your blocks into perfectly sized blocks. The block lock rulers have a channel cut in the back of them. It's a quarter inch wide and it's about three fabric thicknesses <laughs> deep. This is for a half square triangle. Let me find a half square triangle here to demonstrate with. When you are doing a half square triangle, you will, if you use a regular small square up ruler, most often you are pressing the seams to one side, which means you have one, two, three thicknesses of fabric over here and one thickness here. So that when you try and square it up with a regular ruler, the ruler is going to rock because that's an uneven surface. It can be done, I did it for years and years, but it is harder to do because your ruler is gonna rock. And if you've got a ruler that doesn't have a non-slip surface, it's gonna be even worse. So with the block lock ruler, when you plunk it down on that seam, the channel takes up that bulk from the seam and now it's not going to rock. And it's not gonna move back and forth much. My seam must not be exactly <laughs> quarter inch. It will slide back and forth so you can change the size you're, you're trimming to, but it's gonna lock on that seam and it isn't going to rock. So for example, if I want to trim this up to two and a half inches, when I'm doing half square triangles, I, I'm i gonna say always. I hesitate to say always on anything, but let's say almost without exception, <laughs> I stitch, I make them oversized and then I trim them down so that I'm sure that I've got a good accurate cut and that the corners are all where they're supposed to be, that the seam meets in the actual corner. I'm going to stand up to cut this because I can't cut sitting down. Sorry if I move the table. All right, so here's my two and a half inch line here, which means that once I trim these two sides, then I've still got fabric to trim the other two sides to two and a half. So I will trim this. This beautiful rotary cutter was a gift from my friend Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Cut that, close the rotary cutter when I set it down. And now I've got those two sides. Now I can just swing this around, which I'm hoping it stays in the frame. I would have more freedom if I didn't. So if I swing it around, then I can just slide this down and it's ready for the next cut. So here's my two and a half inch line now. This is my final cut. So I want that to be on the two and a half inch line. And I'm going to make these cuts. And now I have a perfect two and a half inch triangle where those seams meet exactly at the corner. So, I can demonstrate that more. I will will do an entire video on that, but I just wanted to show you how that works. So that's the block lock. Next up, and I have another half square triangle trimmed for my stash. All right, finally, number five. This is the Stripology ruler. This is from Creative Grids, and they're the folks that put some um, non-skid Stuff on the back. Uh, they also they make lots of different rulers. So if you like the rulers, check out there. They've got six by twenty-four, eight and a half by twenty. Uh, again, a whole collection of rulers. This one is called the Stripology because you can cut strips and subcut strips very quickly and easily without having to do any math or goofiness. So let's look at the bottom edge here. You'll see that this is 20, well, the ruler itself is probably, I don't know, 24 inches wide maybe, but you can cut 20 inches worth of width here. Here's the zero and here's the 20. At the bottom here, these are slits that are slots that are cut into this plastic. You can see me pushing those up there. And that's where your rotary cutter goes to make these cuts. At the bottom of each slot, and the slots are half inches apart, the bottom of each slot are these 
teardrop shapes and that's where your rotary cutter starts in because it's hard to get it placed exactly in the slot that's very narrow, then you can place it in here. It makes it easier to do the cut. Then at the bottom, of course, you have the marks for one to 20, zero to 20 inches. And then you also see down here, there are squares and stars at the lines. So it is a little hint down here, which I'm sure that's in frame. If you cut at each star, the slot that's at each star, then you're cutting one and a half inches apart. If you are cutting where each of the squares is, then you're making two and a half inch cuts, which is really nice. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to be doing the addition, all right, one and a half, and then it's three, and then it's four and a half, and somewhere along the line, you get distracted and you make the wrong cut. The other beauty of this is that it's very accurate. Because you aren't moving the, the ruler or the fabric at any point, as you would be if you were cutting strips with your regular ruler, then it's accurate because you aren't shifting any of that and you're just making cuts that are accurately cut in here. So let's, and again, I will probably do a video just specifically on this, but I have somewhere. Here's a two and a half inch strip of fabric. You could also cut a piece of fabric into two and a half inch strips using this ruler, but this one happens to come from a jelly roll. So I am going to lay this out and then I'm going to move this over here to make sure I'm in the frame here. Do I have enough to start? Oh yeah, let me start a little further over here. All right, so I'm going to place the, zoo, the um, zero line inside of the selvage so I'm not including selvage in the cut. So I need to square up this end just as I always do. And then this strip I want to line up with one of the lines here and because it's two and a half inch strip it's a little wiggly so i have a white line up here if that's easier to line up or i've got a black line down here so i'm not going to take a ton of time to line that up but you would line that up accurately whether it's a strip or a piece of fabric and now i am ready to cut it so i'm going to I did let you see the bottom here where I'm setting it in. Well, you saw the teardrops, so you can see that without shifting things too much here. All right, so now I'm going to put my rotary cutter in the teardrop at the zero mark and just slice up. Let's say I want to do two and a half inch squares. So I'm going to find the, neck, the slot where the square is there's another square there, there's another square, there's an, whoops, missed it. There's another square, there's another square. So I'm just moving across on the squares. So when I lift the ruler, then I have perfectly cut two and a half inch squares all the way across. Did it very quickly and very accurately. So again, this is the Stripology ruler from Creative Grids. June Taylor also has a similar one. It's not called a Stripology, but it, it has a similar function. I like this because it has these star and square markings down here. So it's, and it's just the ruler I was introduced to that style of ruler with. So those are my top five rulers that I use. I would love to hear what some of you others have for your top fives in rulers. So please share that in the description. We can maybe build our ruler collections together. We can all be ruler queens. As I said, rulers are expensive. So you want to know what something's going to do and how often you're going to use it before you invest in it. I hope this has helped. Glad you dropped by today. I hope you'll come back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and you'll get notification of new videos. Thanks for coming. Peace out.